Hey, thank you. And hello, everyone. Very happy to attend this meeting and have a chance to share our studies here. Today, I would like to introduce a case study in Macau, in southern China. It's a non breeding ground of shorebirds about the influence of reclamation and urbanization of shorebird habitat selection. I'm Zhang Yinkomi, Zhang Mi from Institute of Zoology, Guangdong Academy of Science. And this work was cooperated with Municipal Affairs Bureau of Macau and was under the guidance of Professor Sazhen Zhou. Here, I'd like to address two questions. One is, what is habitat selection of shorebirds on highly urbanized coast? And what is the difference between pest migrants and winter visitors? This is a brief address here. And why we choose shorebird in this study? Because shorebird has the most species decline in population. And the habitat loss and human disturbance are the main serious threat to them. Our study site is located in the Pearl River estuary, which is in the middle of the EAAF. The famous site here should be the Deep Bay, belongs to Hong Kong and Shenzhen. Their famous species is black-faced bill, which the population is relatively stable here. But the shorebird population trend is not the same. Like bill sandpiper, you only found, we found one individual in one time here. And the population of curlew sandpiper shows sharp decline in recent years here. So what is the main problem for the shorebirds? Of course, it's because the development and reclamation. And when the natural tidal flags were reclaimed, the habitat availability and quality have declined. And the ones, a shorebird is the other ones that sensitive to reclamation. You can see it here. And unlike the other days, they can stay in many kinds of habitat. Unfortunately, Pearl River estuary has a serious problem in reclamation and have long history from 1978 to now, or almost more than 500 square kilometers of natural wetland has been converted into artificial wetlands. And from 1973 to 2015, the coastline has increased from 240 to 403 kilo kilometers. But most of them, more than 60%, has been transferred into artificial coastline. Macau is the most extreme, extreme example here. The total area of Macau increased from 80 kilo, uh, square kilometers in 1991 to 32.9 uh, to now, almost a double. But 80% of them are artificial shorelines. However, in the same time, new tidal flex is arising from sediment deposition. So we can see how the land is changed from, from this year. And the area here in the red circle is now become an ecological reserve where black-faced bonebill and other shorebirds stay. So that means new, newly formed tidal flags can be the new habitat for shorebirds. This should be a good news. But however, however, the, this place has under pressure of urbanization. We tested traffic noise here around this place and found the suitable area for water birds are, was compressed. And the buildings and other anthropogenic disturbance also have negative effects on bird species. So what's the habitat preference within and around tidal flags? affect shorebirds in this urban coast. In previous study, habitat characters both inside and outside the patch can have influence, like the patch size, shape, vegetation cover, and so on. And outside can be the land use type, like pasture, woods, waters, 
buildings and, and so on. And this response, the shrubber response to these variables are spe species specific and depends on how they use these habitats. Also, this is a difference in um, migration uh, stage. So our aim are uh, first to characterize the habitat structure and shovel community on both new reform and old in the direction. And second, determine the key habitat characterized characteristics to relieve, relieve shovels from impact of urbanization. And also we develop some com commendations for tidal flag management to aim shovel conservation in intensively anthropogenic disturbing area. Then we collect some habitat variables both within and around a, a tidal flag patch and text the covariance structure of variables by TCA. And we record showers around low tide in autumn, winter, and spring separately in three years. Use repeat measure GLM to test seasonal independence and use NNPS to analyze temporal spatial variation. The re relationship among showers, community, and habitat characterized was tested by LMN and used RDA to test the influence of uniform and all tidal flag on shovel community. Then six tidal flag were choose and they are classified into two types. Based on these two maps, you can see the new one cannot be found in the in 1990. And these two types of what of uh, tidal flag are uh, different in total area, vegetation cover, percentage of artificial shoreline, high building, percentage, and grassland around. Based on these character characteristics, we can class classify them by two axes. One is RC1 that represents a direct human disturbance and RC2 represent the limitation of activity range. Finally, 25 species was recorded, including 16 passage migrants and nine winter visitors. The most abundant species are the following six species. Based on the um, based on on the uh, we we found that each seasonal difference we found that each survey was dependent in different seasons but no significant difference and in winter the species richness and density in that uniform tidal flag was significant higher. By MMDS, more shorebird species occur in, in this, this site, newly formed tidal flag. And most of the winter visitors, which here present in circle dots, were positive correlate with variables that represent less human disturbance. And by this LMN result, LMM result, we found the seasonal effect only significant in abundance. And RC1, every, every table has RC1. That means the direct disturbance is the main factor on shovel habitat selection. However, the interesting thing is when we separate birds into passage migrant and winter visitor, you can see the RC2 has more significant impact which means their activity will restrict in, the, in this intensive urban area. So in conclusion, the new and old tidal flags in Macau represent two different kinds of anthropogenic threats. The newly formed tidal flags 
is formed after reclamation. They are unstable and easily to be changed, but now they are with fewer human disturbance. The old tidal flags, they are stable, but they suffer greater visual disturbance and fly obstacles. So to in this such in this heavy uh, Syria urbanization coast to alleviate human disturbance is the major criteria of ha shovel habitat selection. And those tidal flags with large area, large area with nature boundary, extensive vegetation cover, and suburb with surrounding with grasslands can provide suitable habitat for shovels. And the difference between pest migrant and winter visitor should be the duration of stay of stay. Because winter visitor, they stay longer time in Macau and have larger numbers, and they also sensitive to human disturbance. So we should put them as key protected objects. There was a, a conservation implication here is by the reclamation process, some area can be retained as ecological conservation area to improve the natural properties of artic artificial shoreline and create sedimental se se sedimentation environment. You can see here also, um, as now, Macau has more sea area for land, uh, land claim. Some area here is like a circle is built artificially by stone. Now it's a very favorable high tide route for black space bone build and also shoppers like common snipe is high, high between the mangrove. So this is a successful restoration case and they can be generalized to other regions of Southern China coast. So in future words, we are going to identify and evaluate more human disturbance in Pearl River estuary. Now we call that Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay area and along the whole Guangdong coast. Mm. The one thing is to clarify the land use type after reclamation because some of them may, may be helpful for bird conservation. Like this Nansa Park used to be an reclaimed land, but now more and more winter birds, what birds winter here. And the challenge is to how to measure the human disturbance and urbanization. This is not easy and comprehensive. And also we are now taking part in Guangdong ter Territory Spatial Ecological Restoration Plan. Because Guangdong has the longest shoreline in China, but the natural shoreline retention rate is quite low, almost reached the interior limit made by government, which is 35%. So they plan to restore the coast. But the main idea to restore is mangrove restoration and wetland parks, which are not very friendly to, to shoppers. And they like to use egress like this to as, as an ecological indicator rather than shoppers, which are not easy to find. So we have to remind them the importance of shoppers and their habitats to change their thoughts. And we have already made a rough surveys along the Guangdong coast and find, identify many sites with endangered species and would be very happy to cooperate if someone has the same interest in this area and this topic. At last, I would like to thank many people involved in this project and the funds from Macau and Guangdong province, also NSFC and so on. And thank you very much for your attention.